Jim Brown. This nigga, Muhammad Ali, is unreal. He seems to have the whole fight in control. George Foreman seems to have nothing left at this time. Ali seems to be waiting, as I said earlier, and I think that he knows that he has control. And now we have reached a point where George Foreman's only had one fight this long since February 1970. Only one fight this long since then. What would you say the position is on points at the moment, Joe Frazier? I would say right now that uh, my man is in the lead. I got a feeling that George not going to make it from the looks of it. Now tell me, the one thing that people obviously all around the world will be cheering for one or the other, but do you think Foreman's got a killer punch? If he lands one punch, can he save it? Well, I would say, yeah, if it land on a target, any man can take a punch out, can take you out with one punch. Now George is fighting fully. Here we go, the bell sounds, round number eight, and an even fight here live via satellite, a video techniques presentation worldwide. Ali working to the head of George Foreman. Ali scores again with a light left hand. That time a straight left bounces the head back of Foreman. A quick short jab with the right hand bounces the head around of Foreman. Foreman looking to deliver the real heavy blows. Now he's bouncing better. Almost falls out of the ring. Ali left that punch, twisted his body to the side, and the left hand went kind of over the shoulder. Ali bends him over. Zach Clayton right on the spot, the referee chairman of the Pennsylvania State Boxing Commission. Ali, it seems to be, well, kind of going the way he wants. He's not dancing as much as we thought, but he uh, seems able to control him. Now, it's a pretty good, good heavy right hand taken on the left side of the cheek by Ali. Good right hand thrown by Foreman that time. Again, for Foreman, it seems to be one, or two, maybe three good punches. That punch taken on the glove, that one slips by the left ear, tries to go with that right uppercut that felled Kenny Norton. The left hand again thrown out by Foreman. Both fighters now very much more fatigued than they were a round or so ago. The heat is pretty high here, around 80 degrees. The humidity is probably 85 to 90. At age 32, Muhammad Ali is bouncing around pretty good for the 24-year-old woman hanging pretty tough in there. Again, I caution you to look for the one punch that George Foreman can deliver at any time. This man is devastating, to say the least. These punches are not at this particular time. Try to pull a sneaky right hand on Ali. Ali hanging on, getting away with it, getting away with it. The left hand taken on the side of Ali's cheek. The left hook again on the side of the glove. Right hand by Foreman was not effective. The right uppercut did bounce the head a little bit. Punches will not hurt Ali. Ali just takes him, protecting his face at all times, does Ali. Foreman throwing more punches now. Maybe this could be the tactic of Ali to let the man punch himself out. 30 seconds left in round eight. Very even fight. Ali, a sneaky right hand. Another sneaky right hand. This time he works over the shoulder of Foreman. Watch it now, watch it closely there. 
he'd been taking it easy and then suddenly the moment came suddenly the moment came watch it and that was no phantom that was no phantom punch that was no phantom punch and he's down and out definitely was not a phantom punch However many times you look at that, it's the clearest punch you could see. George Foreman down on the floor, no phantom punch, a punch of real power. He softened his man up. They said Ali didn't have a killer punch. Well, that was it. But my God, he softened his man up. And over there, over the there, magic of Bob, 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 Bob Sheridan is trying in the ring to get to Ali but he's not succeeding at the moment. There you see the pandemonium. There you see the pandemonium, one of the greatest fights of all time. There you see those are the Zaire version of hard hats there, trying somehow to protect the two fighters. Angelo Dundee predicted it. Angelo said he would knock him out. Angelo came over here and waved to Jim and I. He put his thumb up as if to say if this was exactly what I predicted. Well, I must make one point. Muhammad Ali had been waving at me, winking at me all night because he knew I thought that George Foreman would knock him out. And he is a friend of mine, so he was saying to me after every round, look at me, big fella, because I'm doing it. Fantastic. Fantastic performance. There you see the scene in the ring. I can't see much, much hope of Bob getting a very deep coherent interview at this moment. I don't think we're going to be able to talk to Muhammad Ali in depth at the moment. But there you see the scene. The whole place is going wild. The people right at the back of the auditorium, they're on their feet too. They're on their feet, is this more on the foot? They're on their feet. They're not on their feet. They're on their feet. Or their foot. And there you see the one thing about this Look at there. that face. Look at that face. Oh, a man who can scarcely believe what has happened to him who can scarcely believe what has happened to him. George Foreman, the man who was invincible. George Foreman, the man who was totally invincible. Muhammad Ali is certainly suffering worse punishment in the middle of that ring at the moment. Worse punishment in the middle of that ring than he ever got from George Foreman. And there's George Foreman, look at that, his head is fallen. He's really, really an injured man. And the man they said that could only float like a butterfly, but not sing like a bee, has really stopped. George Foreman, the beaten champion. What a moment of tragedy this is. He left, there he goes. No one in the auditorium paying really any attention to him as he goes. As Muhammad Ali knows from that first fight against Joe Fraser, people are only interested in winners. Look at that sad, dejected head. Look at the people around him, three or four people maybe. Nobody wants to mob a beaten champion. The whole, the whole of boxing history has been turned upside down. That lonely figure going into the dressing room was not Muhammad Ali but George Foreman. Meanwhile, the scenes, as you can see them there, the Zaire police and army are trying to protect Muhammad Ali. There he is. There is the picture of the man who has undoubtedly fought his greatest fight tonight, won his greatest victory tonight, Muhammad Ali on his way to his dressing room. There he goes. Hooray, they yell. Hooray, they yell. Ami Sorti. In fact, there is disappointment. There is enormous disappointment that he's going, actually. There are people yelling for him to stay. Oh, and there are people trying to fight off the press. Look, there they The press of people, I should add, in case people think that that is a Nixonian attack on the media. With him just behind him, you may have seen Bob Foster there, former light heavyweight champion. Fantastic promotion. Fantastic performance. Muhammad Ali completely fooled a lot of us who thought that George Foreman was invincible. It makes us take a second look at the two listening fights. But as I said earlier, he has magic. 
it is. Let's watch it come again. As we see Muhammad Ali dispose of the tyrant George Foreman. Ali unleashes a combination on the very fatigued George Foreman. It's coming up here now. Right hand misses. Watch the left. There's the left. Now a little straight right hand. That one spins his head. That's the knockout punch right there. It was a straight right hand taken right on the face of Muhammad Ali. This is the dressing room of Muhammad Ali. David Frost is making his way down there. Ali talking to Louis Saria. Another one of his handlers there. Muhammad Ali hugging Dr. Ferdy Pacheco, the physician that said, yes, he will beat him. And Angelo Dundee, the only single man that I know that said he would knock out George Foreman. And Angelo said he was absolutely sure. I couldn't, but I didn't believe Angelo. His closer friend uh, as Angelo Dundee is to me, Jimmy, I just didn't believe it. Well, I believe that Angelo believed it because he was absolute about it. Did you notice Ali look in the mirror his dressing room to make sure he wasn't marked? What does this do, Jimmy? Does it open up the heavyweight championship again? It Will he retire? It opens it up. It opens it up. Will he retire? Is he the greatest man that ever fought? Well, right now he is, Bob. I'll tell you. Here we go. We've got uh, the dressing room. He's a bad giant. And once he caught it, he was finished. And I'm telling you that he has no power. I kept telling you he don't hit hard. Yes, and guess what he did in the end? He started fighting dirty. Right. Yeah, yeah, you don't know. His thumb got me in the one. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. But I'm smart. Well, see, I'm a pro. Right. Head 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 I'm a pro, see? Right. Right. I felt him with my arm reach and then grabbed him, which right. I cleared up. Yeah. He's a pro, though, Logan. I love God, but that's the power of all of them. That's how I couldn't get up. You get him with the right hand. Couldn't get up. He ain't never got up. I kept talking to him during the fight, too. Congratulations. Am I the greatest of all times? Muhammad, you told me in Deer Lake you were the greatest of all time, and I think everybody out there watching now will say that you've proved it to me. man who was bearing me up, too power, too strong, I proved that Allah is God. Right. Elijah Muhammad is a messenger, right. and I have faith in them, and regardless of the world and the pressure, I made it an easy night, because Allah has power over all things. If you believe in him, nothing, even George Foreman, will look like a baby. It wasn't a close fight, was it? No. It wasn't a close fight. No, no. no. Was, it close? was it close before I knocked him out? No, no. No, no. 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 you suck Wait, you, wait. Is this on close? You tell, is it live? Right now. Everybody stop talking now. Attention. I told you, all of my critics, I told you all that I was the greatest of all time. When I beat Sunday Liston, I told you today, I'm still the greatest of all time. Never again defeat me. Never again say that I'm going to be defeated. Never again make me the underdog until I'm about 50 years old. Right. Then you might get me. But I didn't dance. I didn't dance for a reason. I wanted to make him lose all his power. I kept telling him he had no punch. He couldn't hit. He's swinging like a sissy. He's missing. Let me see your box. I hadn't started dancing yet. You can't say my legs are gone. You can't say I was tired because what happened? I didn't dance from the second round on. I stayed on the ropes. When I stay on the ropes, you think I'm doing bad. But I want all boxers to put this in the page of boxers. Staying on the ropes is a beautiful thing with a heavyweight when you make him shoot his best shots and you know he's not hitting you. I would have gave George Solomon two rounds a steady punching because after that he was mine but he was falling he was missing i don't know if i'm gonna fight again or not i'm gonna retire as of now i have to talk to my leader the most honorable are you still planning to retire i said i'm to all the muslims thanks to almighty god allah i want all of you fans out there who believe in me read the muhammad speaks newspapers go to your local muslim temple and learn more about the life-giving power from allah through elijah muhammad that i've got you saw all the white people the critics the world had me ranked to go down this was that man and allah god was with me and this man looked like nothing right. well, i want you to remember that well, want to know where i get the power visit your local muslim mosque read that muhammad speaks newspaper right. take it from me I'm that just proves you can have commercials on closed circuit television just as you can have it on real television muhammad what did you say to George no, it's not a commercial. No, Tell them people to believe. believe in the God. Tell me, what did you say to George Foreman before the fight? What did you say? To him? I told him he has no power uh, in the corners and in the clinches. I said, shoot your best shot. I'm going back to the ropes. 
They told me he was strong. Didn't, this, didn't I look stronger than him? Why, why didn't you tell me, Mamet? This is the thing that puzzled people. Why was it when you were on the ropes that he could not hurt you, even when you were right there on the ropes? Blocking, and I was pulling back, and I have a radar built inside me. I know how to judge punches. Didn't I tell all of you out there on your local radio shows, mostly black stations, I told you... I'm going to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. His hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. So that's what happened. That's what you said to me. But tell me now, are you really going to retire, Mom? I'm seriously thinking about retiring. There's nothing else for me to fight. I told her, well, I'm going to retire. I'm going to hold the title for a few months. I don't, they took my title unjustly. I told you, I'm the real champion. I told you, I'm the champion of the world. All of you bow. All of my critics crawl. All of you suckers who write the Ring magazine. Boxing in those days, all of you suckers bow because the stage was set. You made him great. You made him a bad Joe Lewis. You made him a hard puncher. But I want everybody from this moment on to recognize me as the scholar of boxing. If you want to know any damn thing about boxing, don't go to no boxing experts in Las Vegas. Don't go to no Jimmy the Greek. Jimmy Come to Muhammad Ali. What? I am the man. One last question, Muhammad. Hello, my man, Hugh Hefner. Hugh Hefner out there. Muhammad, one last question. Hello, Tell me, is, would you say that this at this moment, hello, is this the happiest moment of your life? No, no. Happiest moment of my life when I met Elijah Muhammad, the freedom speaker of black people. But I want to say this. Hello to all my friends in Louisville, Kentucky. Joe Martin, Fred Stoner, all of my friends in Louisville, Kentucky, where I started. I'm recognized all over the world now, but my greatness came and started in Louisville, Kentucky. And that's one of the greatest cities in America, Louisville, Kentucky. And I predict that Louisville, Kentucky will have another world champion. Because Louisville is the greatest. Louisville is